think that all cities and what we've learned from Cape Town is to anticipate uh, how climate is changing and to measure that more carefully and to respond to that change before you find yourselves in a crisis. The day zero was a frightening concept for us and we were fortunate that we had reasonably good rainfall in April that literally saved the day. And the second important development was that citizens reduced their water by demand and use of water by 55% over a very, very short period. That was absolutely remarkable. And I think it's the message that most people have uh, been taken by surprise of just how well that city has managed to uh, reduce its water use. Well, I think one of the things that I said earlier was to anticipate the crisis. The other important um, element of this is to manage water more effectively. And to manage water more effectively, you've got to measure better. And if you measure in water, display that information to the public sooner rather than later. Build trust, build communication, share information, bring the public onto your side. Our restrictions required the citizens to use less than 50 litres per person per day. To get to that point, they had to do massive saving cam uh, campaigns and participate in that saving most of all. So they've done remarkably well and that behaviour seems to continue even though a level of restrictions has been lifted from the city and we're now at 70 litres per person per day, per day with the new restrictions. What citizens have done is to adapt by doing all kinds of things to change their behaviour but also putting small technologies in their homes which arguably should have been there years and years ago had we anticipated the water crisis at a household level. That change looks to me to be a substantial one. The conversation about water and water resources and the value of water has changed remarkably in the city. So day zero really didn't impact on the poor largely because their lives haven't really changed in decades. They still line up uh, in informal settlements, that is, to collect their water from a public tap stand. They still go to communal uh, services or systems for sanitation, toilets and so on. And the impact of the crisis didn't really change their lives in any real way. The only area I think where the impact was felt was that the income generated from revenues started to decline because those who could afford water used less water and less money was available to maintain the system so that we could continue to subsidize the poor adequately. Now that didn't, doesn't mean to say that the poor got less services, but their service is at such a basic level that it didn't really change. What I am saying is that the rich subsidize the poor so that they get free water. About 40% of the population of Cape Town receives free water because their income, household income, is below a certain threshold. We constantly get various protests across the city of Cape Town, across various African cities in South Africa, because we have poor water services, poor sanitation services, and other services that people really are suffering without a decent basic support for livelihoods um, and for, for health and hygiene. So that's something we see constantly, but day zero didn't necessarily bring about a fresh set of protests. I think the long-term climate change models are suggesting that a lot of Mediterranean climates, um, and they do have different weather systems, I acknowledge that, but the experience of droughts are going to be shorter intervals between droughts, warmer conditions, and intermittent flooding is typically what the models are showing, and we're experiencing that for real right now. We don't have to go and even wait for 2030, because that's becoming a pattern that we're seeing across large regions across the world, and it's possible that Barcelona is within that same pattern.